Hi, I'm Michael from Kitchen Insider. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to attempt to give 20 kitchen design tips in 10 minutes. So let's just get going. Starting with number one, kitchen designs. Get at least two, preferably three or four, different kitchen designs done. It can be by the same company if you know you're definitely going to use them, but different companies can often be more beneficial. You don't know what you don't know and you can't see what you haven't seen. Even if you don't like it, you can rule it out or it might trigger a new thought or different approach you haven't considered. So always worth getting a few designs or at least a few sets of eyes on your plans. Invest in a good fitter. Honestly, they're worth their weight in gold. I've seen more budget-friendly kitchens look amazing amazing and outlast some more expensive kitchens all down to the quality of the fit. It may mean the installation costs a bit more, but if you know they're a good fitter or fitting team, this is where it's worth allocating a bit more of the budget to get a good fitter. Kitchen zones. When designing your kitchen layout, think about zoning areas out and optimizing them for particular tasks or types of storage, as well as where those zones sit amongst each other within the overall layout to maximize functionality and the flow within the kitchen. Don't forget about landing areas. These are the clear areas of countertop space. Try to ensure adequate space around or close by to major appliances to enhance functionality and safety. A good general rule of thumb is to provide at least 30 centimeters of countertop space on either side of your hob or cooktop. For the sink, I'd aim for around 60 centimeters of counter space on at least one side and again at least 30 centimeters or so on the other side if possible. Obviously more the better. These landing areas offer convenient spots to place groceries, dishes and cookware while using or accessing appliances making your kitchen more efficient and comfortable to work in. Kitchen island spacing. Ideally allow 1 to 1.2 meters around a kitchen island between countertops or any walkways. This allows for a good amount of space for moving around and opening opening any cupboards or drawers, appliances, things like that, and still have some space in front of them as well. If you've got a little bit more space and there's two of you in the kitchen a lot of the time, you might want to go a little bit bigger if you can. If you don't have one meter, you might be able to go a little bit less, down to say 90 centimeters, but really measure this out. You need to check and be sure you're okay with this for your particular space and your particular use case. And don't push it too far. Refrigerator placement. Don't put the fridge right up against a wall or too close to another run of cabinets. Most fridges need to open past 90 degrees in order to open the salad drawers and bits and pieces inside. If the door can't open fully and past that 90 degrees, it can be such a pain trying to use it, trying to wrestle with the drawers and things inside. Also, if you have large handles on the fridge, take these into account too. You'll need even more space to get the door to open fully, so check your clearances. Don't break up your countertops. So if you can help it, don't put a tool cabinet right in the middle of a run. Keep these tool cabinets to the ends of runs or together on a separate wall. It can ruin the flow of the kitchen and interrupts the practical prep or cooking space and functional clear counter space. Even if you think it's to optimize and get the perfect kitchen triangle distances, it's not worth compromising the overall flow and practical countertop space in your kitchen. Oven heights. Consider the height of any built-in ovens, combi ovens, or microwave if you're having these in a tall cabinet, especially if they're on top of one another. You can get different cabinet configurations to lower or raise where the appliances will sit. There's usually a few different stock options for this. Measure it out on the wall or visit a showroom and try the exact height to make sure you can reach it safely. Especially if you have a combi oven above a single oven and it makes everything a bit too high, they usually have drop down doors as well that can be difficult to reach up and in safely. So really check these heights. Appliance hinging. I've mentioned this before on the channel, but always good to have a reminder. Most washing machines and microwaves are hinged on the left. So the handle's on the right and the hinge is on the left. So consider where you are placing these within your kitchen layout. Try not to put them at the right hand end of a cabinet run as when you open the appliance door you'll create this awkward type opening gap to access it. Try to position these appliances in the middle or to the left of your kitchen for better access. Drawers. I'm sure you've already heard it but drawers are better than doors most of the time. So if it makes sense and could be a drawer and budget allowing 
make it a drawer. It's just much more accessible storage. Consider your corners. Corner cabinets are the worst, they just are. So do you have to have one? If so, which type of corner cabinet is best for the space, layout and you? Can you optimize it in any way using any storage mechanisms? Does it make more sense to just block off the corner completely? Corners are a pain, so try to make the best of them. Don't forget your bins. Again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Whether they are integrated or freestanding, think about them and plan them in during the design stage. Don't make them an ugly afterthought that ruins your lovely new kitchen. Lighting. Don't forget about it for one, but when lighting your kitchen, add layers of light. So ambient, task and decorative. And make sure you can control everything individually, not everything on just one switch. The more options, the better, and even better if some or all of it can be on dimmer switches as well. Greater flexibility with lighting is always a good thing. Cooker hood ducting. If you're having your cooker hood vented out, which you definitely should if you can, the shorter the route and the fewer bends it has has, the more effective it will be. So try to plan the most direct and straight route that you can. Cooker hood filters. If you have a recirculating cooker hood, don't forget you'll need to have some charcoal or carbon filters. If you don't, then your cooker hood really isn't going to be doing very much. And don't forget, you need to replace these filters periodically, typically every six to 12 months, depending on how much cooking that you do. Countertop slab sizes. Most stone countertops like granite, quartz, marble, or even porcelain, things like that, come in slabs approximately three meters long. Keep an eye on your kitchen design and make sure your run or island isn't long longer than three meters. If it is, chances are you'll need a joint, which may require another slab, which can make the price jump up, which can be a pain if it's just that little oversight. And if you do need a joint, consider where this joint is going to go and how it might look if it's the sort of thing that's going to bother you. Which leads on to my next tip, countertop template. If possible, I think it's really helpful for you to be present during the countertop template. If you have a worktop that needs templating, there'll be a few little questions and decisions you'll need to make and you can decide exactly how you want your countertop to look. Things such as which side of the sink you want drainer grooves or if you want drainer grooves at all, how far the countertop overhangs exactly in front of your cabinets or how high you want your upstand to be around the wall of your kitchen, little things like this. And during the template, any little details can be discussed and custom customized for you. Now there are pretty standard answers to most of these and your templater can usually advise, but ultimately this is your decision. So if you can, be in the room when it happens. Countertop overhangs. Now the general rule for unsupported countertop overhang depths is that if your countertop is 12 millimeters thick, you can have a 20 centimeter overhang. If your countertop is 20 millimeters thick, you can have a 25 centimeter overhang. And if it's 30 millimeters thick, a 30 centimeter overhang. Now these are unsupported overhangs and there are always exceptions. So double check with the manufacturer, but these are a good general rule to know if you're considering this style of overhang seating. Pay attention to the height of your countertop, your cabinets, plinth or toe kick, and countertop thickness can all influence the overall height higher or lower. It may only be by a small amount, but it can really help with the ergonomics and day-to-day -day use for you. So if you're particularly tall or short, pay attention to this and see what you can do. And by the way, a very loose ergonomic guide is to stand up straight with your arms down by your sides and where your wrist bone falls is a good guide for your ideal countertop working height. Expect the unexpected. Kitchen renovations are big projects with lots of intricate details and moving parts. No project ever goes 100% to plan. There's always something, whether it's big or small. Try to be prepared as much as you can, but also be prepared for something unexpected. And as a bonus extra tip, try to enjoy the process. Dreaming about designing and then finally getting a new kitchen installed and finished can be a really fun and satisfying process. So try your best to not lose sight of this. We did it, maybe. I'll find out when I edit the video if we made it in 10 minutes. I'm intrigued to hear from you. What are your top tips or little pearls of wisdom when it comes to kitchen design and having a kitchen renovation? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy all my other videos really, but why not check out this one all about kitchen zones. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.